Coming up. Now the way that we get speed is all through the hips. This is Mr. You Can Too. He discovered speed walking during the pandemic and now he's teaching you how so you too can reap the benefits. I hate to break it to you. Uh, there's a better way to clean, my friend. But you're probably risking injury for everyday movements. Luckily, Dr. Sam has tips to keep you injury free. We'll find out what you need to attract more butterflies to your garden, and we'll learn about what could be the healthiest sport in the world. All of that and more is today on SoFlow Health. Is a photograph in homage to the water tower that used to be here in Fort Lauderdale for the International Swimming Hall of Fame where we are today. Hello and welcome to SoFlow Health. I'm Hunter Frankie and if you're new here we talk about things when it comes to health, exercise, nutrition and how to get involved in all of it. And sometimes we go to cool museums like the International Swimming Hall of Fame. Behind me you'll see some Olympic memorabilia of actual swimsuits worn in the events. Over here we have some of the original clocking technology to keep track of swimmers times in Olympic races. Anything from a stopwatch or some high tech for the times. Today we have very precise technology to make sure there's minimal controversy. Well, there's a lot more to see here at the International Swimming Hall of Fame right here in Fort Lauderdale. But first, have you ever wanted a butterfly garden of your own? Well, Butterfly World has the answer for you. Wouldn't it be nice to have a garden in your backyard just like Butterfly World where we are today? Well, good news for you. We have Amanda from Butterfly World to tell us how you can recreate this at home. Amanda, good to see you. Good to see you. Tell me, what is required for me to attract so many butterflies? Really, it's so simple. Is plants. It? There's actually two main types of plants you need for butterfly gardening. The first is the host plant, and the second is nectar sources. So in this garden, we have a lot of nectar sources. This would be a really good one, dwarf powder puff. Wow. We also have some fire spike behind me over here. Mm -hmm. We have some porter weeds. All of these will feed the adult butterflies, but what you want also is host plants that will feed the baby butterflies or caterpillars. And what makes the nectar plants different from the host plants? So the nectar plants will be mainly to feed the adult butterflies. They won't be attracted to lay their eggs on them, but the host plants, for each individual butterfly, you have a different type of host plant. Right. For the monarch, it's the milkweed. The monarch will only lay its egg on the milkweed. So that's the difference between the two. You have host plants over at the garden center for people to get. Yes, yes we do. Let's head over there. All right, great. Hey Amanda, I know we were just inside of the aviary, but now we're over in the garden center because this is where you would get plants at home if you wanted to create your own garden. Yes. And why are these particular plants important? So basically this is the first plant most beginners start with. Okay. Um, this is the milkweed. Milkweed will actually be the host plant for three different butterflies, but the most commonly known one is the monarch. The monarch butterfly will come and lay its eggs underneath uh, one of these leaves, uh -huh. and it's really tiny, so it's hard to spot them at first, but once they grow up, there'll be these giant caterpillars that are black, white, and yellow, Okay. Um, and they'll kind of munch on those until they're ready to pupate, and then you'll find a chrysalis, and that is the stage right before right. they come out as a butterfly. I want to show you the passion vines as well. The passion vines? Yes. Well, let's head over there. All right. I'm trying to see if I can hear it through the passion vine. I'm in. <laughs> Tell me about the passion vine. Sure. So the passion vine, there's actually a lot of different species. Uh, this one in particular is a lavender lady, which is a hybrid. It'll still get you uh, some butterflies here. Basically, this is a host plant, and they will also lay their eggs on that. Now, if it's not a host plant, then what is it? If it's not a host plant, then it's a nectar source. Um, nectar sources don't have any butterflies come and lay their eggs on them, but they have a lot of butterflies come and visit them because they're really good for just general food for the adult butterflies. The more host plants you have, the more your garden will smell good to them and the more butterflies that will come. All right, well, thank you so much. I think I'm just gonna take this one. Now, I don't have to convince you that swimming is good for your health. You knew that already. In fact, we've all known that for a very long time. So much so that cigarette advertisers used to pair Olympic swimmers with their ads. Take a look. 
In front of me are historical advertisements and comic strips that illustrate the health of swimmers and then the health of cigarettes. Well, since then, we have certainly changed our tune. As you can see here in South Florida, we're making sure to keep it as tobacco free as possible and hopefully litter free as well. And swimming isn't the only way to take care of your health. In fact, our friends at Nutriflow have IV therapy that may be of interest to you. Hey Carla, how are you? Hey Hunter, how are you? I'm great. It's good to see you. Tell us about Nutriflow Med Spa and IV Lounge. Absolutely. So we offer IV vitamin therapy and we also offer a whole host of aesthetic treatments such as Botox, facial fillers, and our crown treatment is the PDO Thread Facelift, which really helps with saggy skin so you look and feel younger. Now what am I in for today? So today you're going to be getting our IV therapy and that's our wellness strip. So it's really good for overall health and wellness. Alright, how about we set me up then and then we'll talk about some more about what you do here after. Absolutely. Absolutely, come on back. All right, great, let's go. I absolutely love coming into Mutual Flow. I love the environment, the experience. I know the owner, Carla, Carla, personally, and love what she's created here for women, for men, and for people that just want to better themselves on um, the inside and out. I would say this is for anyone that is looking to just feel better about themselves, whether it's internally getting some you know, vitamin flow into your system or externally wanting to just remove some fine lines and wrinkles and, and all the other services that she has here that can really um, exemplify inner, inner and outer you know, wellness. You're in absolute good hands. Carla is a nurse practitioner. You know, outside of being the owner, um, it's such a great environment. You're going to feel good walking out, and you never know what's something new you could try that becomes part of your, you know, wellness regimen. Here I am. So, Hunter, how do you feel? Feel pretty good. Just a slight cool sensation in my arm. That's normal, right? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, yeah, other than that, pretty relaxed. And how long am I going to be here? So this takes about 30 minutes roughly to trip. About 30 minutes. And what is in there? So this is our wellness strip. It has vitamin C, trace minerals, and B vitamins to help you feel energized and more hydrated. So when should I feel that? Right away? Well, yes. A lot of people do feel it Im immediately, and then it's going to help you feel that way into your week, throughout the day and then into the week as well. All right. Well, I'm going to let this do its thing, and then I'll see you in a little bit. Absolutely. We'll see you soon. Carla, we have some of the benefits of IV therapy right next to us here, but what are these benefits? So these benefits are really great if you're looking for overall energy boost, if you want to kickstart your body's metabolism, also if you want to help your hair, skin, and nails to get a brighter complexion. So we have a whole host of different treatments for almost anyone. Anyone can benefit from IV therapy. We offer a customized approach to IV therapy, so each one of our IV treatments is tailored for the individual. So whether you're looking for athletic recovery to boost your metabolism or even to get a brighter complexion, we have something for everyone. Stay tuned for speed walking and swimming. Both are Olympic sports and both are great for your health. We'll learn about the benefits when SoFlow Health returns. Focusing on you. From your team of experts at Sylvester Comprehensive Cancer Center, South Florida's only National Cancer Institute designated cancer center. An active 44-year-old David Hirschman got the shock of a lifetime after feeling nauseous for months. They said you have... Uh, what they called stage four cancer. David was sent to Dr. Jose Lutzky, a medical oncologist specialized in advanced skin cancers at Sylvester Comprehensive Cancer Center, who diagnosed David with metastatic melanoma. Melanoma is uh, a cancer that starts in the, in the cells of the skin in general that produce pigment. Anyone can get melanoma. Dr. Lutzky says sun exposure is the main cause and that it's important to check for any moles that are new or changing. But in some cases, like David's, melanoma can develop where you'd least expect it. It was related to a mass in his bowel. There are what we call mucosal melanomas, melanomas that start in areas where the sun never shines. Sylvester, an NCI-designated cancer center, has access to hundreds of clinical trials. David was enrolled in a study using two immunotherapy drugs, and his tumors began to disappear. David credits Dr. Lutsky and his team for getting him back to the life he enjoys. When you get that level of attention and care, it makes the world of difference.
How much coverage swimwear should or shouldn't have has been in discussion recently during the Olympics. And in fact, it's been discussion throughout time. And here you can see the history of swimwear. Welcome back to SoFlo Health. I'm Hunter Frankie. We're at the International Swimming Hall of Fame in Fort Lauderdale. It's currently under construction, but there's still plenty for you to see, and there will be plenty more in the future. If swimming isn't your thing, don't worry. Mr. You Can Too is going to show you how you, too, can speed walk. How does one spend a beautiful day in Margaret Pace Park? Well, we could walk, we could run, we could jog, or we could learn how to speed walk. Fortunately, to teach us all about speed walking, today we have Mr. You Can Too, Alvy Thompson with us. How is everything? Life is beautiful. Oh man, I haven't seen you since before the pandemic. It's good to see you here. And throughout the pandemic, you started something that caught my attention and quite a few other people's attention. That's speed walking. Why? I mean, it's great that you say this because it was actually during the pandemic that speed walking became a big part of my life. And when everything was closed, including the beautiful parks, I didn't have anywhere to work out. So I said, what can I do that's not going to injure my knees uh -huh. from all the surgeries that I had in college? Why don't I just do some speed walking? So I just started walking as fast as I could and before I knew it, started blowing up. And what's nice about speed walking is it's a great way for us to get our heart rate up without necessarily causing a lot of stress to the body. We are fanny packed up because this is an important part of the whole this situation. Well, you gotta understand, if you're trying to speed walk, how can you be effective with a bunch of stuff in your pocket? So not only does it look good, but as Dion Sanders says, when you look good, you feel good, and when you feel good, you play good. So by feeling good, we're gonna speed walk good. All right, so I'll line up with you here. Let's start from the ground up. The number one thing you wanna do is think about your connection to the ground. So with every step, you wanna think of your heel hitting the ground first, then the toe, heel, toe. Heel, toe. Perfect, perfect, perfect. The next thing we're gonna think about is swiveling our hips. So when I step, I'm actually gonna turn my hip to get a little speed into it. There you go. We're gonna work on the top. You don't gotta worry about that. <laughs> we're gonna get there. So when we're thinking about our arms, we want about 90 degree angle. Yep. Now, the biggest thing here is you wanna think about these elbows. When they come back, we're not trying to knock anybody out with it, right? <laughs> so let those shoulders be nice and smooth. And I want you to just think about these elbows. All right. Just rocking back nice and slow. What's your favorite part about speed walking? That it's fun. <laughs> so who would you recommend speed walking for? Honestly, speed walking is great for people of all ages, but I think older people who are maybe 40 and above who are looking to really get back into exercise, Yeah. but maybe they're a little too afraid to do anything too exerting. But if they can already walk, then that means you can speed walk. From the fount of youth, in the Roman times, to the Dark Ages, and all the way as far back as the Bible goes, swimming has not just been documented, but it's been celebrated and often associated with health. And here to tell you more about that and this museum is Bruce, the former president and current historical consultant of the International Swimming Hall of Fame. We're in a building that was created in 1990. The original Swimming Hall of Fame building is on the back of the complex and that was created in 1965. So we're an older museum that doesn't have all the bells and whistles that you'd expect in a modern museum today. It is more of the collection of the history of swimming from 10,000 years BC when it was a life-saving skill to the modern Olympic Games. It covers everything that you can imagine to do with the water. Uh, scuba diving, snorkeling, these are all things that you can only do if you know how to swim. But swimming has impacted human culture and history in ways that you can't even imagine is possible. So exploration was possible because people knew how to swim from shipwrecks. Africans and as slaves and Native Americans were the great swimmers of the planet and then systemic racism in America and in other countries prevented African Americans from learning to swim so they lost the art of swimming. So at one point in time early in our history, the Africans and slaves and Native Americans were the great swimmers and maybe 20% of Euro-Americans could swim and mostly they were degenerate sailors and those type of people. And once the Red Cross started, in most pools and beaches here in Fort Lauderdale, uh, African Americans couldn't find a place to swim. Swimming is something for everybody and it's really important as you get older. When you can't do the impact sports, when you have hip and knee replacements, the place to go is in the pool. But don't wait till then. Get in the water, enjoy your life on the only planet that has something you can swim in. 
And Florida has so many great places to swim. Dr. Sam teaches you how to properly do everyday activities while avoiding injury and more from the International Swimming Hall of Fame after the break. That's Johnny Weissmuller, also known as Tarzan. In fact, most people probably know him as Tarzan, but he's in the Swimming Hall of Fame because he has five Olympic gold medals and has set 57 world records. So I think we should start remembering him for his Olympic achievement as well. They certainly do here at the International Swimming Hall of Fame in Fort Lauderdale. Welcome back to SoFlo Health. I'm Hunter Frankie, and we are in the photojournalism section of the museum, which is perfect for us because that's what we do. Well, there's still more SoFlo Health to see and more International Swimming Hall of Fame. But first, watch this. We always talk about having a clean home and how important it is, so we're going to show you how to properly disinfect a surface. So once you spray it down... Hey, Hunter! What's up? What are you doing, man? I'm cleaning. Uh, there's a better way to clean, my friend. Oh, well, do you, you mind? Absolutely. Oh, here. I uh, appreciate it. Thanks for being to work. For sure, yeah. yeah. I mean, go get them. When you're cleaning your surfaces, and I want to show Hunter the first thing I see, and I see it a lot of times in my office, guys, people bending over the surface, overextending the shoulder. It's going to put a lot of strain on the neck, the upper back, and of course the lower back. A better way to do it, you want to get as close as you can to the surface, and you want to kind of bend your knees and keep the back in alignment and wipe the counter top off. But what's even worse, a lower surface just like this, guys. I see a lot of people doing this, and they'll bend just like so. This is an easy way to injure that lower back. You want to come down to the surface just like this, squatting in position, wipe the countertop just like so, and that's an easy way to clean your house and save your back. That was a whole lot better. It's a good thing to be able to see that, you know, I was just going to show people how to wipe down a counter, but it's nice to know that they've got some household help. Whoa, whoa, Hunter, what are you doing? Uh, this pillow. Exactly. When you flex and bend down like that, flexion and rotation, you actually can flare up a former disc injury or a lower back pain injury that you may not know you even have. You want to push yourself to the edge of your chair. Now what I want you to do is use your hands as support and go stand straight up for me. There you go. You're going to walk over to whatever you're going to pick up, whether it's a pillow, keys, a purse, and bend with your knees. Perfect, coming right back up. Perfect form. That's the way you want to pick something up. This has been great to learning about household biomechanics, but I, I really do have some stuff to get to. Do you mind? Absolutely, go do your Or you thing. hang out here. All right, awesome. Just a bit. It's also a good idea to make sure that you trim the hedges. Hunter, and <laughs> what are you doing? You're killing me, Smalls. Have you learned nothing? You want to save your back when you're doing any kind of activity, whether you're inside or outdoors. Let me clear this. I'll show you real quick. What you want to do again, bend with the knees and want to get down to the level. If you are bending over as well, you want to pull your shoulders back. You don't want to be hunched over like this where you're doing this because that'll put a strain on your neck, your upper back, and of course your shoulder. In addition to trimming the hedges down here, yeah. what, what do most people do? Up here? Yeah. yeah, they go up here. They reach overhead as tall as they can, and then they're pushing, especially if a branch is hard. You want to get a sturdy ladder, obviously with a friend, but you get on the level, and you want to stand up. So if I was on a ladder and I was on par with this branch, you want to kind of have your arms bent, your shoulders pulled back, and using the force of your shoulder, your shoulder blade, your upper back, everything together, instead right. of putting myself just like this. You see how like this is a compromised position? This is a good position when you want to get that right. through. All right, Dr. Sam, thanks a lot. Can I get back to work now? If you do it the right way. Okay, all right. <laughs> In the photojournalism section of the International Swimming Hall of Fame, we get to geek out a little bit because they have cool equipment that we as a TV crew might be able to use to make some pretty cool images. If you take a look down here, you'll see some of the original underwater camera housing used to take some of those photos that we wouldn't have been able to see without it. Now, if you take a look around here, watch out there, and you'll see the pioneer of split camera lens technology so that we're able to get those 50-50 camera shots of seeing what's happening underwater and above it. I'm joined by Tamara today of the Brain Center here in Miami Shores. We're going to talk about the different programs that they have, but first, we're going to remove our masks. We're nice and socially distant. For those that don't know, what is the Brain Center? 
we are a neurology specialty, healthcare, uh, patient-centered, comprehensive, and coordinated practice, very focused on the patient and the family and the caregiver. One of the things that we do at the Brain Center is we provide um, support services together with the clinical care and we tailor our plans very specifically to the individual. One thing that is always the same is that we focus on educating and helping the caregiver, the spouse, the family member, whoever helps the Parkinson patient um, by offering support groups, education, and the workshops. All of these programs are free, by the way. Wow, what's a good example of some of the programs that the Brain Center provides? One of the best examples of our care philosophy is our POM program, the Park Optimist Miami, which is the Parkinson's arm of the Brain Center. Uh, the POM engages our Parkinson's patients uh, in um, programs, educational, with their caregivers. We have weekly wellness workshops, uh, as well as evidence-based exercise programs, uh, such as Rock City Boxing. It was um, created specifically for Parkinson's patients to help them improve their mobility and uh, core strength. Parkinson's is a type of neurodegenerative disorder um, affecting a specific type of neuron in the brain that helps to coordinate our movements. So with Parkinson's disease, patients start having troubles with movement of their body. Here at the Brain Center, we offer specific programs for our Parkinson's patients, uh, including rock steady boxing, uh, seated yoga, and music classes. Um, studies have really shown that Nothing stops the progression of the disease. No medication that we have currently stops the progression of the disease. The only thing actually that's been shown to be effective in stopping the progression of the disease is therapy and exercise. Boxing classes offer me the opportunity to punch and move my feet and talk all at the same time. Coordinating all three is a big challenge, and boxing classes permit me to do that. It's a wonderful method to maintain balance because there is a feeling of dizziness which is associated with Parkinson's. And we do these exercises that are geared towards catching your brain and making sure that you don't fall. I'm very grateful for the, to the Brain Center. It offers me these opportunities that I would never have had on my own. It's great. I highly recommend it. Tamara, thank you so much for your time here today. If somebody wants to learn more about the Brain Center or the programs you have to offer, how can they? Well, it's very easy. Um, you can reach us on the web, uh, braincenter.org, uh, or call us at the number that you see on the screen. You can ask us any question and get all your answers. We are happy to help. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Welcome back to SoFlow Health. I'm Hunter Frankie, and we've been spending the day at the International Swimming Hall of Fame, which will eventually look like this. And right now, it looks like that. And you see that tower back there? It's going to be the tallest high dive stand in the Western Hemisphere, standing at 27 meters. And we can't wait for it to be completed and to come back and visit. That's all for this week's episode of SoFlow Health. Thank you so much for watching. As always, you can watch previous episodes of SoFlow Health on SoFlowHealth.com, and you can follow us to share with us what you're doing to stay healthy. And until next week, I'm going to read some more about Ronald Reagan's swimming history, and it's goodbye and good health. Next week on SoFlow Health, we head to a famous South Florida locale that may contain the secrets to the pyramids. It's not the 1970s, but this once popular sport is making a comeback. Plus, you'll need some water after that, but what kind should you drink? Find out next week on SoFlow Health. We'll see you then.